Good evening. It's good to see everyone here tonight. Just a couple of reminders that I mentioned this morning. Um, the Christmas gifts for the Philippines are due next Sunday. And there are still, I think I saw three uh, names still out there on the table. So if you can, you're willing, pick those up, get those filled. Ladies, remember um, all your events coming up Tuesday, the breakfast at 830, and then the ornament party Tuesday evening at 530. Let's um, look, on the, look on your announcement sheet. Pay attention to those uh, on the sick list. Those under the special prayer request. Remember uh, Rachel Tyler and Daniel Grant, Roxanna Nicholson, all be having surgeries. We had a good um, elders, deacons, and preachers meeting this afternoon. One thing I need to announce out of that, our services on December 24th and December 31st, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, we will have our regular worship service, of course, in the morning. And then we will have our afternoon service at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock on Christmas Eve and New Year's. That's all I have. Uh, Chad will come for us and start us with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and all the many blessings you give us. We're so thankful for Sunday, the first day of the week, when we come to church, worship you. Father, we pray that everything that we do here is according to your will and pleasing your sight. So thankful for the rain we had. So thankful for the sunshine we had today. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give us. I ask you to please build a sick right now, especially the ones on the prayer list that was mentioned. I pray for the people going to the doctors, having tests done. Please build the caretakers. I ask you to please be with our country right now. Military conflicts going on. We have a lot of soldiers away this time of year. Please keep them safe and keep their loved ones comfortable. I ask you to please go with us this hour. Have a good hour of worship and give you what you deserve. Our very best. In Christ name we pray. Amen. song we're going to sing it twice we shall assemble on the mountain we shall assemble at the throne with humble hearts unto his presence we bring an offering of song glory and honor and dominion shall assemble on the mountain, we shall assemble at the throne, with humble hearts into his presence, we bring an offering of song, glory and honor and dominion, unto the Lamb, unto the King. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go, anywhere he leads me in this world below, anywhere without him here his joys would fade, anywhere with Jesus I am not afraid, anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know, anywhere with 
with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hand may lead me over drearest ways, anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can say, Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep When the darkening shadows round about me creep Knowing I shall wake and never more to roam Anywhere with Jesus will be home sweet home Anywhere, anywhere Fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can say, Be God. Invitation song will be 939. You will mark that in your book. We're going to sing 96 before Ken's lesson. If you want to stand, you may. 96. <clears throat> You are beautiful beyond description to marvelous for words, to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom? the depth of your love. You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. That's certainly an awesome song, isn't it? I stand in awe of you. Thank you for leading that, Jimmy. It's so good to see everyone tonight. We have a good Sunday night crowd. God bless you for your presence and what a blessing and honor it is for us to get to enjoy another worship service together. What a privilege it is, the greatest privilege in all the world, to be able to worship our God in heaven. I want to begin our lesson tonight with a statement that I really like. You may have heard it before, and I think you will agree with me that it's one of those statements when you hear it, it really stands out something you want to remember and most of all the kind of person you want to be. A beautiful face will age and a perfect body will change but a beautiful soul will always be a beautiful soul. That's a great statement. And so our lesson tonight is entitled, A Beautiful Soul. 
maybe you've said about an individual before she has a beautiful soul and the reason you said that about that person was because her life overflows with qualities that causes her to have a beautiful soul. And so tonight, I want to give you seven of those qualities. There's more, of course, but I want to give you seven qualities of a beautiful soul. Here's the first one. A beautiful soul is loving. In John chapter 13, Jesus talked to his disciples about being loving. But he said something in this passage that's very special about the subject of love. 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. Now, when you first read this, it might sound a little confusing, or you might ask, a new commandment? I thought that man had always been taught by God to love others and that's true right it was plainly taught in the Old Testament love thy neighbor as thyself but now Jesus in talking about love is talking about a new commandment so there must be something different about the loving that he's talking about in this passage than has ever been talked about before well, what is that? A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. Now, here it is. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. See, the world had never known, and the world will never know another love as great as the love of Jesus for humanity. And so the reason this is a new commandment is because it is based on how Jesus has loved us. And he said, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now, that's love to the ultimate degree. And that shows as brothers and sisters in Christ the kind of love that we are to have for one another. And when you have this kind of love, are you going to have a special group of people? Are you going to have a special congregation? Are you going to have a situation where the people in that congregation cherish being around one another? Cherish worshiping together? Cherish working for the Lord together? Cherish doing a lot of different things together? Going places, spending time together. You're a close-knit family. You're the family of God. And you have beautiful souls because you love one another like Christ loved you. And he went on to say in the next verse, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. You're not going to be able to hide the fact that you follow Christ when you love like this. By this 
Shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another? And so a beautiful soul is an individual that sincerely and genuinely and honestly loves their brothers and sisters in Christ. And of course, loves all men. And of course, even loves their enemies. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 8, Peter said this away. And above all things, have fervent love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. And so when we think about a beautiful soul and the fact that a beautiful soul will always be a beautiful soul no matter how many years have passed it's not like the physical body it's not like the the physical face but a beautiful soul will always be beautiful and a person that has a beautiful soul will always be striving to love just like Jesus Christ loved. That's what we want, right? That's our purpose. That's our attitude. And we have a special congregation because of that. Are there some that don't do that? Yes, there's some that don't do that. Are there some that are not really emphasizing that in their lives? Yes, there's some like that. But generally speaking, the ones that are true, faithful Christians are people that are committed to having a beautiful soul because they know how important it is to love. And they want to love just like Jesus loved and so as we grow in our Christian lives as the years pass by our soul will become more and more beautiful because we will have more and more love toward others that brings us to our second quality tonight a beautiful soul is kind in Proverbs chapter 31 I think we would all agree that we're reading about a beautiful soul. She is called a virtuous woman. A woman of moral excellence. And a number of things are said about her in this passage of scripture. The kind of wife she is. The kind of mother she is how benevolent she is, the way she cares for the poor. She has a compassionate heart. And she is really praised in this passage of Scripture. But there's something that's said about her words that really stands out in verse 26. In her tongue is the law of kindness. A beautiful soul has a tongue that speaks kindness. And in this passage, when we read of there being a law of kindness in her tongue, she has so disciplined her tongue, she is so careful about what she says that she makes sure that nothing comes out of her mouth that is not spoken kindly. And you like to talk to people like that, don't you? They are such a blessing to everyone that meets them. 
Have you ever said about a person, she is one of the kindest people I have ever been around. That's such a great compliment to an individual's life. I've always loved what Paul said in Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. And if you're wanting a passage to memorize, this is a great passage to memorize. But not only to memorize it, but to practice what Paul is teaching here. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now listen carefully to the next verse, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. We'll come back to that in a few moments. Forgiving one another. We'll come back to that in a few moments. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Instead of all these bad things, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking, malice, instead of those things, just be kind one to another in word and deed. And people that do that, they have a beautiful soul because their life is based on the great quality, first of all, of love, and then kindness, which is an attribute of love. You remember in 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul was giving the specifics about love, when he was defining love, he said, love is kind. And so a beautiful soul is loving, a beautiful soul is kind, and here's our third quality of a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is generous. People who give to God and people who give to others liberally and freely, joyfully, are very special people. They have a beautiful soul because their emphasis is not on their own lives. They're not selfish people. And again, this is another one of those characteristics of love in 1 Corinthians 13, right? Love is unselfish. Love seeketh not her own. See, a generous, giving person is the individual that is not thinking about themselves. This person is thinking about other people and what's important in life and what they should be doing with their money and their time and their abilities. And they become servants because of the generous attitude that they possess. And a servant is a beautiful soul. In Acts 20 and verse 35, Paul reminds us of something that Jesus said while he was here on earth. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And in Acts chapter 10, we read of a great man. The man's name was Cornelius. And we are told that 
he was a soldier. He's a centurion of a band called the Italian band. So a centurion was over a hundred soldiers. And so this is a man of authority. This is a man who has a great responsibility. Did he care about other people? What kind of individual was Cornelius? Verse 2 says that he was a devout man. He was a very religious man. He was one that feared God with all of his house. What's the whole duty of man? It begins with fearing God, right? Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Notice this third quality of his life. He gave much alms to the people. It doesn't just say he gave alms to the people. That would have been enough. And we all know that alms constitute money or goods given to the poor in charity. But this phrase says that he gave much alms. He was very generous. He was very giving. He gave much alms to the people. And then we're told also that he prayed to God always. I don't think it's by accident that God chose this man, his family, his friends, for the gospel to be taken to the Gentile people by Peter to them, the first Gentile converts. I don't think that's by accident. Here are people that had a beautiful soul. And that beautiful soul wanted to do everything God told them to do. What did Cornelius say in Acts 10, 33? Now therefore, we are all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee by God. Peter, just tell us what God would have us to do so we can do it. So we're not surprised that he was baptized. His family was baptized. His kinsmen were baptized. His friends were baptized because they had a beautiful soul. And a beautiful soul is a generous soul. And we're here to give, not to get. We need to always remember that. We're even told in Ephesians 4, have you ever thought about it from this standpoint? Now we work, and we're commanded to work, right? Right? And as we work and make money or make a living, we have a lot of responsibility with that money, don't we? You have to pay an electric bill. You're thankful to be able to pay one. You may talk more about how high it is than how fortunate you are to be able to pay it. But we have electric bills. We have water bills. We have to provide for our families. Groceries have to be bought. You can just go right on down the line, can't you? It takes a lot of money to live, and it's, it's costing more and more to live now than it ever has in our lifetimes. We understand that. But have you ever thought about this fact that in Ephesians 4, Paul talks about working from the standpoint of, that you work to be able to give to others. Listen to verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. We work to have 
to give to those that are less fortunate than we are. And so a beautiful soul is a generous soul. Here's our fourth quality of a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is compassionate. In Colossians 3 and verse 12, Paul talked about some things that we are to put on in our lives. He begins with this. Put on a heart of compassion. You have a heart of compassion that feels with other people, that hurts with other people, and because of that heart of compassion, you minister to other people. When you go back to Ephesians 4 and verse 32, you're going to see a word, we read it a moment ago, that's really a great, great word. It's tender-hearted. And a tender-hearted person, a, compass a compassionate person, cannot see those in need and pass by on the other side. That heart is touched. That heart weeps with those that weep. And that heart lives every day looking for opportunities to help other people. That's what you do when you have a heart of compassion. That's what you do when you're tender-hearted. You feel with other people. You put yourself to the very best of your ability in their place. And you do everything you can to make their burden better. To make their lives easier. That's a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is compassionate. Here's our fifth quality of a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is forgiving. A person that holds grudges is an ugly person. A person that lives to get revenge on others is an ugly person. But someone who forgives, who has an attitude of forgiveness regardless of how they have been treated has a beautiful soul. And there could never be a better example of this than Jesus as he was on the cross, as he was suffering and dying for the sins of the world. And he looked out over all those people and most of them hated him. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. There's a beautiful soul. Go back to Ephesians 4 and verse 32 again. After you read that word tender-hearted, then you begin to read about forgiveness. And Paul said, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Remember 
your faults. Remember your sins. Remember all those terrible things that you have done. And remember that God has forgiven you through Jesus Christ. And so when people commit sins against you, when people are unloving towards you, when people curse you, when people spit upon you, when they mock you and ridicule you, be a forgiving person. That's a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is forgiving. Here's our sixth one. Sixth quality of a beautiful soul. A beautiful soul is encouraging. Don't you love to be around positive people that are always seeing the best in you and others? And they're always encouraging you and others to be better and do better. That's a beautiful soul who does that. I want to read you a passage from 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. This is a simple passage. I'm going to read it to you from the New American Standard Version. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. I like that, don't you? What am I to do with my life? I am to encourage others. And I am to build others up. I'm not here to discourage them. I'm not here to tear them down. I'm not here to make them feel bad about themselves. I'm here to help them to have the best life they can possibly have. And I do that by being a person that's interested in them because I love them. And by being a person that encourages them when I have the opportunities to do so. And being a person that constantly strives to build them up by the things I do and say to them so that they will become a person more and more like God would have them to be. You know, that's a great mission in the church, isn't it? For every person, doesn't matter who you are. Because everyone can encourage others and everyone can build others up by the attitude that they possess, by the things that they say, by being interested in others. Young, old, the middle-aged, everyone. A beautiful soul does that. A beautiful soul is encouraging. And then here's the last one this evening. A beautiful soul is happy. Don't you like to be around happy people? Don't they have a great influence on your life? There's nothing like seeing people smiling. There's nothing like hearing people laughing and sometimes you get to talk about what a funny laugh they have. But people that are joyful are people that have a beautiful soul. Does God intend 
for his people to be happy? Yes, he does. And we see this subject even talked about from some unusual situations or circumstances. For example, when Paul was in prison at Rome for the first time, he told the brethren at Philippi when he wrote to them, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And 19 times in those four short chapters, the words joy, rejoice, and gladness appear. Think what that must have meant to that church at Philippi. For Paul to write to them and them see the positive, happy attitude that he possessed because he was in Christ even under most difficult circumstances. Don't you think that made them happier the day they received that letter? Don't you think they said, well, if Paul can be like this, surely we can. Look at what a beautiful soul he has, even though he's in prison. And I really think this is something where all of us could improve our lives. I don't think we're as happy as God intends for us to be. I think we let this old world and all the bad things that's in this world cause us to worry so much and to be under so much stress that we lose a lot of happiness. Because we're concentrating on the wrong things. You know, there's things in the Bible that the Bible talks about that says you can't explain these things with words because of the greatness of them. Like, for example, 2 Corinthians 9, 15, where Paul said, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He's talking about his gift of giving Jesus for the sins of the world. It's so wonderful. It's so marvelous. It's so meaningful. It's so far-reaching. It cannot adequately be described with words. You can talk about it to the very best of your ability, but you still can't adequately describe how great it is. Well, do you know that said about joy? That we possess because we're Christians? In 1 Peter 1 and verse 8, we read, Ye rejoice... With joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable. People should recognize the fact that we are Christians because of how happy we are. A beautiful soul is happy. And oh, what a blessing it is to be around a happy person. You remember our statement? A beautiful face will age and a perfect body will change. But a beautiful soul will always be a beautiful soul. And when we stand before Christ at the judgment day, 
with a beautiful soul, we know that he's going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. If that's not your situation tonight, you have the opportunity and the blessing to respond to his invitation by being baptized to become a Christian or by being restored to your former state as a Christian. That's what the invitation is all about. And if you need to respond to Christ's invitation tonight, please come as we stand and sing. chance to take the Lord's Supper this morning, you can go to the back at this time. And we're going to sing 985, or first verse for a closing prayer. Trials dark on every hand, and we cannot understand. All the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eye and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathering home. We will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you tonight thanking you for this day that you've given us to meet together. We ask that you help us to take the lessons that we've heard today to heart. We'd like to thank you for all the many blessings that we have in this country and ask that you be with our troops overseas and that there may be a peaceful end to the war. We'd also like to ask that you be with the sick in the congregation, that they may regain their health. And as we leave, we ask that you be with us and bring us back together safely. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.